think it's ugly. I don't think it's ugly at all. Downtown Detroit's beautiful. Detroit is the best big city in the country. I don't like cities. It's a city with the widest range of people that you can imagine. city. Television and radio stations are competitive. The newspapers are competitive. I think it is one of the best newspapers in the United States. I think it's about average. I think it's a very bad newspaper. As editor, I know very well that the day we get no complaints is the day we put out a dull newspaper. In one moment, you're being hanged as too liberal. The next day, you're being hanged as too conservative. In some things, we are liberal. In others, we're conservative. But there is an effort to give, to our best ability, both sides of a question. To give our readers a balanced diet from which they can select their own opinion. The editorial department. The editor has arrived. It's the start of a typical workday at the Detroit News and time to produce an all new afternoon newspaper. Some of the staff have already been here for hours helping to prepare the first edition. An afternoon paper must keep going 24 hours a day, seven days a week, if it's going to report all the news as it happens. The Detroit News has been doing it for a century, which makes it one of the oldest newspapers in America. It's also one of the biggest afternoon papers anywhere, with a circulation over 600,000. Its Sunday edition, the Sunday News, tops 800,000. Almost all this circulation is in the seven counties of metropolitan Detroit. That means serving Detroit's needs and interests is the paper's number one concern. It's a tough beat, but hardly a dull one. The first edition. It will be followed by three more. Throughout all three, the news will be re-edited, added to, and repositioned as more facts flow in. By the time the final is out in late afternoon, it will be almost a brand new paper. Okay. Hello, Mr. Hayden. I have some messages for you, American Motors, about Roy Chapin. Okay, we'll call that. Will turn, and Mr. T Worthington would like to talk to you, and here are two personal. Okay. The editor's first order of business will be to check over the first edition to evaluate the treatment of news. It's divergent opinion and the discussion thereof uh, that makes democracy work. After all, uh, one of the great things about American newspapers in general is that uh, if you read only that, you're going to get a pretty good view of what's going on in the world. Number two man on the news side is the managing editor, responsible for the day-to-day -day reporting and writing of hard news. Wars, politics, fires, and men who bite dogs are all in his special province. When you get into a metropolitan newspaper, you got a special breed of cat. It's a little more than a local paper, and people expect more of it and, and have a right to expect more. But we have access to every major wire service. The copy comes in here, just comes in here by the ton. Uh, we, like all metropolitan newspapers, uh, maintain a Washington bureau. To, to cover the capital itself in addition to the wire service. We also uh, send people to places where we think we can fruitfully get something that we're not getting from the wire services. Uh, a point of view, a, an insight, a uniquely Detroit look, or uh, maybe a case where we just don't think we've really gotten a good picture of what's going on someplace. Let's send somebody there and take a look. Take a man that we know and trust and send him. Send people to South America, Europe, Asia, any place that there is anything that we think we can fruitfully tell our readers. 
that, that's interesting or important for them to know. And that's why we're different than, for instance, France, uh, where if you want to know what's going on, you buy six papers and read all six of them. And uh, uh, by uh, believing what you wish to believe from each one, uh, you finally get a bit balanced viewpoint. The second edition is put together. Remaking the front page, the news editor gives stories new positions and rewritten headlines as they change in importance. The idea is to keep the reader right up to the minute on facts and perspective, a job that sometimes goes unappreciated. Well, I always feel any uh, newspaper, magazine, you always have to take it with a grain of salt. There's not an article that's written that's not slanted. In the articles that I've read, I found most of them to be factual. I don't feel we get both sides of a, of a question, any question. Well, I could take this paper and I can, uh, I can put a story in here to make any point I want about any given thing. There's no question about it. But the idea is, uh, it's a very simple idea. Uh, so you go out and you learn everything you can about both sides of any issue. And, uh, the, the key word to me is fairness. You, you, you've got to be fair. And, I, and I'll tell you, uh, if we aren't, uh, who's going to be? There isn't anything left. Th this is the only place that, that's still even trying. The desire to report it straight runs deep in a veteran newspaper man. It takes a lot of know-how, too. What the real me is doesn't matter. It's, it's what the story is, and, and you learn how to get it. You go out, and you, you know the people to talk to, and uh, after you've been in this business long enough, you know how to talk to different people. You talk to hippies one way, and you talk to police quite another way. Uh, just because somebody tells you something doesn't mean that it's necessarily so. And if you talk to enough people with a scene uh, any place, you can pretty well synthesize a, a good, uh, pretty well down, straight down the middle uh, version of what happened, even though you'll vary in details here or there. Uh, you, you can come up with an honest, close to the fact story. Sometimes getting close to the facts isn't that easy. The paper's sports columnist interviews a Yugoslav boxer using a 10-year-old boy as an interpreter. Pape. Rock, rock, pape. Rock, pape. Was that all one? What's his first name? Rock? How old is he? 125 years old. He's well preserved. Staying objective is a problem for a political reporter as well. I'm kind of an old-fashioned newspaper man in a way, you know, in that I don't lead somebody by the hand or by the nose to a truth, but just try to give them the, the elements so that they can decide what's the truth. Mr. Romney, considering the effect on this country politically, are you considering this war? Reporting it straight is a very interesting problem. Sure, I like to unload, but I have to remember, as a politics writer, i got to work on both sides of the fence, you know, and if I start getting very opinionated about, uh, you know, I hate all Democrats, you know, all Democrats feel this way or that way, and never, never write anything harsh about Republicans or something, when I go out to cover Democrats and attend their conventions and talk with them and try to find out the why of what's going on, they won't talk to me, and I wouldn't blame them. Being impartial, getting the facts, telling a good story. These are the everyday ingredients of any assignment. Something else helps too, a deep sense of committal to the job of reporting news. The idea that what you write, what you find out about events and uh, things that are happening today may influence people or at least shape their thinking about events to me is important. If people are uninformed, how can they make reasonable decisions about my life, their lives, and, uh, and the country itself? I mean, it's as simple as that. Can you work Saturday? Overtime? Okay. All right. Uh, we got the parade down Woodward, Memorial Day Parade. But we also have the factor for the peace marching that wanted to parade down Woodward and didn't get a permit. They say they still might do something. If there is a... Uh 
confrontation between, well, as we had in New York, between the hard hats and the, and the, the anti-war kids. Uh, how do you want to cover this? And let's make sure that we don't overemphasize uh, any violence that may uh, occur, because uh, we get criticized for that, and uh, violence always makes news, but let's be sure that it's kept in perspective unless we have real trouble. face of it, it's just another peace march. But it can't be just another story. The reporter must find an approach that makes it come alive and have meaning for the reader, an approach that gets at both sides of the question. In this case, there was an obvious way to do it. There were essentially two stories, and I followed both of them. First, to ask the people who were there why they were there, in their own words, and then talk to the people along the parade route and ask them what they thought of this demonstration of this spectacle and weave those two together. It was a delightful contrast. I think it's disgusting. I think the way they're going about this protest business is all wrong. Going down there shouting obscene language down the street. What, what kind of a protest is that? It's nothing. Do you think they have the right to protest? Or? Yeah, they, everybody's got a right to protest if they're uh, in a, if they know what they're talking about and know what, they're, what is right and wrong, what, what is wrong. So you don't, you don't think they know what they're doing? I don't think any of them know what they're doing. They want to protest just to be protesting, that's all. Anything, anything that comes up, they want to protest about. A Detroit news photographer. On many assignments, pictures are as important as words. And it sounds like a silly question, but why are you here? Well, I'm here because I feel strongly that the war must end and end uh, now. We're building a gas chamber for you. Difference of opinion always makes for a good story, but a reporter must document it, not aggravate it. The risk is he may aggravate it without meaning to, just because he's there. You put that communist flag down, traitor. No, please, no. Taking no chances, he leaves the parade early to phone in his story. Yeah, I'll say. And I wore protesters stage their version of a Memorial Day parade. Yeah. Detroit News gives me a great deal of freedom in what I do. What I write goes in the way I write it. They'll back me up on it. There will be editing for style, for clarity, for accuracy. But the editors don't distort what I write and make it into something else. Some papers do this, the Detroit News doesn't. We're accused of it, but it simply doesn't happen. So that I can maintain my own integrity, even though I may disagree personally, philosophically, with some of the editors, because what I write, if it's fair and accurate, goes in the way I write it. And this is important for newspaper. Variety of people and variety of opinion. That's Detroit. It holds true at the news as well. Men and women of all ages and races work together in all departments, reflecting a personnel policy that judges employees by performance only. It makes for a more responsive paper, closely attuned to the diverse city the news serves. There's a kind of an excitement about working in the building at a newspaper. Even though the work is routine, the environment and the atmosphere isn't. I love the people here. Some of them are weird, but you know, it makes the day funny. You need it. You need the youth to liven the place up, and you need the age just to keep a, a firm hand if, if, if things get too radical. As far as our staff is concerned, we try to have as representative staff as we can. For instance, uh, like every other major newspaper, uh, 25 years ago we had no black reporters. Uh, we now do. Women, especially, have come into their own at the paper, both in the editorial and business areas. Some head up whole departments, like the women's section here. Recently, it was incorporated into the news department, recognition of the growing significance of news events that interest women. Women have also invaded the traditionally male inner sanctum of the editorial board, writers of the paper's controversial editorial page. 
This is the place where the management of the news speaks out on current issues. Probably no other section of the paper draws such strong reaction, some of it complimentary, some of it highly critical from readers who disagree with its opinions. The whole purpose of editorial writer is to be opinionated, otherwise they're not worth reading. This is the one page of the paper that's opinion and not fact. But it must be restricted to the editorial page, and the, and the reason that this integrity must be preserved is we've got to give people the reasonable expectation that when they pick up our paper and look at a news story, they know that this, to the best of our ability, is an account of what happened. Yeah, on our editorial page, it's our job to express our viewpoint, uh, which should be accepted for just exactly what it is. It's our viewpoint and nobody else's. And uh, we don't try to make ourselves popular on our editorial page. Uh, we try to state what we believe. The thing is that you can't, you can't, you're not always right yourself, you know. I, when I look back over some of the editorials I've written in uh, my 10 years on the news, there's some things that I said in 63, perhaps, or 65, that have been proved wrong, and uh, uh, I wish I hadn't said them, but Damn it, if you're going to, uh, uh, nobody's got a crystal ball that can see five years ahead, so you're bound to be wrong in this business. You think it's that a paper should admit when it's wrong like that, or what, what do you think a paper should do? Oh, I think it, I think it's uh, a sound principle in retaining confidence of your supporters if you say, well, I put up a black here, I was wrong on that one, but, and then go on with, because you can't anticipate all the, all the trends in this world. No one knows, but when you come to think of it 10 years ago, compare 60 with 70 and look at the state of the world. It's, it's so changed so much that no one can see that far ahead. One thing no one foresaw was the rebellion of a number of young people today against the establishment. An establishment represented by their elders as well as institutions like the news. Anyone who is working for the Detroit News is very much inside the establishment, and they're trying to write and relate to people who are really entirely outside of the establishment, and they can't do that. To reach across the gap, the news has been angling many of its stories directly at Detroit's youth. The editor of the feature department makes a special point of it. A newspaper of the future is in its youth and in its youthful readers. And if we don't get the young reader to have respect for us and read us, then we stand a chance of not getting them when he is more along in years. It seems to me that in this world, uh, which today is so, so big and so complex and uh, so exciting, that the uh, role of the feature department, I, I really think, probably has its greatest challenge that it's ever had in the history of the newspaper business. Features once just used to be those things that you found in the back of the newspaper. But today, features really are the extras of the newspaper. And a newspaper's role with TV and with the way that communications go, it, it, it has more to do and a greater responsibility than just to present last night's news. What we try to do is present a magazine that is viable. When we uh, printed this story here, uh, there was a great deal of discussion among the editors exactly where should we crop this picture. And uh, we cropped it where you see we cropped it, her behind Ed show. Now we expected a large reaction from this. We got one phone call from a creaky elderly lady and she said she liked the article very much but did we have to print those pictures. But we say to a guy like that, uh, this is life, this is where it's at. We think most people want to know what their kids are doing. We did not take sides in this matter. We merely presented it. This picture is on uh, view downtown in Detroit. Your kids can pay four or five dollars and go and see it. Wouldn't you like to know what's in the movie? And uh, she had to agree. She would like to know it. Because it appears in the news, uh, it should not have a cloak over it any more than the television set should have a shade on it when certain things come across that you may not want to see, but which may be vital to your understanding of what the life is in this world. Another unforeseen event was the rise in street crime in the inner city. 
Unfortunately, the black community reacted to a news campaign to cut down on the crime as criticism of blacks. It led to a short-lived boycott of the paper. Today, black opinion has improved, but news columnist June Brown sometimes gets an earful when she goes after an interview for a story. Gertie, uh, you know, I'm writing this column for the Detroit News, so I want to know what my friends are thinking about the Detroit News. Do you, do you take personal, the... Uh, me personal or just my friends? I want to know what you personally think. Do you, do you take the daily news? No, I don't take it anymore. I just take it now on Sunday. You remember this crime back yeah. here? They had this big article in the paper about they would have about 20 black and two white. You mean that crime in the street? Yeah, the uh, crime in the coverage. street. Yeah. And nobody done no crime but the black people. According to? According to the news. Yeah. And I didn't like that. So I feel like that little phony. Well, that was my personal opinion about it. You know, then my customers, too, they call me up and tell me, you taking the news? Well, stop. They read the paper. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so you stop. And I would stop, and I would tell everybody else the same thing, you know. Uh-huh. What do you think? What could the news do to make you buy it again? Tell it like it is. One way the news is telling it like it is is by recognizing black achievement. Here, it sponsors an award crediting a community leader with keeping things cool during a hot summer. Thank you. Now, first of all, I'd like to thank the Detroit News for making this award possible. It's an award for a police citizen. Uh, it's a police citizen award in recognition of outstanding contribution to police citizen cooperation and understanding to Reverend Isaiah Patterson. <laughs> We have thousands of good, substantial, decent, uh, well-established Negro citizens, and they and the similar-thinking white citizens are going to do it. When you get right down to it, black people and white people want basically the same things. Blacks merely want to be treated like human beings, you know, like everyone else, just like an American, no more, no less. And I think uh, any, any group or any agency or any institution that does that is going to have support in the black community. That is why I'm working for the Detroit News, because in spite of the differences between the black community with the news's editorial uh, policy, you have a very good personnel policy. Mm. And this is the paper that has given all of us a start. In the you know, I uh, am very intimately involved with the news. The news was, has been in my home since I learned to read. And when you get a paper like that, it, the paper becomes a part of you. And when a paper does something that hurts you editorial, almost as though someone you loved has been untrue. Mm -hmm. And it, it hurts you so very deeply. You mm -hmm. have to come. Rita Griffin and I were talking about it the other day. She says that she gets mad at the news and throws it away, but then she's got to sneak back and read it because it's the only way you're going to know what's going on. <laughs> the main plant is going to be setting back 150 feet. Members of management discuss the building of a new printing on a site in Sterling Heights. It's part of a general expansion of facilities planned to take care of the expected upward growth of the paper in the years ahead. There are other things ahead too, like increasing computerization. The news plans to go on adding advanced equipment to streamline production. As the paper expands, it will also mean more job opportunities for everyone. Like any newspaper, the news depends on its advertising, especially its classified ads. Its tremendous pulling power has helped forge success in the past. I think our first ad ran about 20 years ago, and today we're spending approximately a half a million dollars a year, and the results are quite spectacular. The news is determined to go on improving its editorial product. It will extend its coverage of local and national affairs, gearing it more than ever to the needs and interests of a tough, hard-to-please audience, the average Detroiter. I think the news is typically backward as far as women's equal rights are concerned. It's a very good paper. I love it. I love it. I wouldn't have it changed for the world. It seems that they could be a lot more liberal. Now we make people mad. As a matter of fact, the day that a newspaper comes out and everybody reads it and nobody's mad, 
uh, you're almost dead certain uh, that that was a bad newspaper. The, the theory of our form of government is, uh, in, involves an informed populace. Well, we're part of that information process. And the better we do it, the better a newspaper we are. I'm not a politician. I just read the Detroit News. The grandma out there and reads it, and it's in print, and it's the gospel truth because she read it in the newspaper. And I think that they do have a tremendous influence, if not directly, at least indirectly, in the attitudes of people, how they look at the city and how they look at life in general. I think from the day this paper started, it was dedicated to this community, uh, to covering the news of this community, uh, to being as much as it can be a light in dark places in the community to suggest how things might be improved.